Oh, we good now. We good? Yep. Nice. Uh, so, Danielle, this week I've been watching all this governmental stuff, right? The Senate stuff and the Kavanaugh and Dr. Ford stuff has been really interesting. Tell me about it. I want to hear your thoughts, though, if you saw any of No, my, my thoughts are not going to be included in that. Hey, what's up? Welcome to another episode of the show. It's episode 471 of the show. I'm your host, Andrew. Hey guys, I'm Danny. And this is your source for tech, gaming, and entertainment news. Head over to theshowradio.info forward slash listen. And definitely check out the show with your favorite podcatcher. Also, if you have picks that you want to take, check in with us. Uh, let us know where you're listening from uh, using the hashtag TSRPod. We'd love to hear from you. We'd love to uh, check out your comments on either Twitter or Instagram and all that good stuff. Danielle, it's been an interesting week. How about you? It's been hot. We don't have trade winds still. It's been raining and muggy. And whatever reason, I thought it was a really great idea to start my fall cleaning. This feels a bad idea. My apartment's in shambles. But it's getting done. And I got stuff planned. I got, I, got, I don't know. I'm looking forward more to next weekend, though. Word. It's a 19, we have a 1950s themed birthday party, family reunion. So I bought a dress. But uh, but my boyfriend is like a, a three piece suit. Okay. It's too hot for a full five piece. It's way too hot for that. And I realize it's really hard to really, I guess, what is it? Dress for the fifties as far as men go. Like a suit to me, a suit is a suit. Right. They all look the same to me, and I'm like looking at all of these photos and going for reference and. Like there's there's not a whole lot that's changed. Maybe they might use that, like the fedora, the cap. Right, the cut and the stitching might be a little bit different. See that that that's the point that I'm like don't know much about, and I'm just getting into it. I know that there's a whole science between picking the right pattern for your tie and your little handkerchief, but as far as the stitching and the length and the pleats and the shoes, and I'm like I don't know. We're just buying you a suit, yeah. and I think suits. They're generally timeless, so it's going to be good for no matter what. Absolutely. Convincing my son. My son, on the other hand, first I was going to buy him a suit, and then I don't know what happened. I don't know like, if my son is in some alternate universe because he, for years he loved wearing suits. He loved when I bought him suits. He wished he could wear suits every day. And then I take him shopping. He's like, I don't like suits. When did mm. I ever say I like suits? I don't know. The five suits I've bought you in your life? <laughs> right, right. And he's like, no, I don't like wearing suits. And I'm like, oh, God, whatever. So he's got the typical, um, I guess, rockabilly greaser look with the straight leg jeans, the white undershirt, the rolled up, the, the really nice dress shirt, but it's like really worn loose kind of thing with the rolled up sleeves and some like, High tops. Okay. You know? Okay. I think so, we're, gonna, we're going a little bit above and beyond for this party, but I don't go big or go home. <laughs> no, it sounds like you guys are going to have a lot of fun, which is what's really important. Um, I think I have to set up uh, uh, for a wedding in November. Uh, so I think I'm going to wear a brown suit. I have a brown jacket. I actually have to match. Uh, the uh, jacket with a pair of pants. So I'm going to be doing that search. Uh, maybe a blue shirt, a brown and blue tie with brown shoes or something like that. Um, and either black belt to to kind of do like a, a cross with the colors or something like that. But that's definitely something that is up in the air right now as it relates to uh, festivities that are upcoming. Um, so yeah, aside from the heat and stuff like that, everything else is cool though. Yeah, I'm going to be redoing the cabling, reorganizing my setup here. <sighs> a lot. It's funny because I, uh, I started ordering stuff like a week ago and I'm so anxious. I'm, I'm never really anxious to like clean house, but I'm anxious of like making small little upgrades, which kind of leads into like the, the show that, um, the, documentary that you had me watching right because there's some stuff in there that i'm like i'm still so confused about specifically mics yeah mics are interesting yeah because you have the omnidirectional mics that they were talking about then you have the the cardioid pattern 
which is I think the one that I'm using now where we can have uh, four individuals around the table and because the the pickup doesn't go that far out, we can still have four individuals sit around the table and um, not cross feed the actual voices. And then you have the ones where you can have you on one side of the table and me on the other and then it only picks up your side and then my side and nothing on the other sides across and um, so so that's pretty pretty neat now the 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 one that i really wanted to to have as far as the mic is concerned is the one that they mentioned the uh, samsung q2u type mic where it gives you the xlr combo and also the usb combo which is what i have with atr 2100 and i think that one allows you to do anything that you want to do in the future because you're not limited to just a USB mic and, you know, simplifying it that way makes it easier. For me, it's like, I'm trying to always find that mic that has, and really it's not the mic that can do it. It's a whole other stuff that goes behind it, but um, the mic that will help me cut out the background noise more. Right. Like you're like your mixer and, and, and the audio mixer that I have can only do so much that having the right mic set up for that, and just figuring out, I guess, is it the condenser mic that I need? Do I need the dynamic mic? Is there a mixture of the two? Do I stick with one that's a USB? Do I go with the one that's XLR? And I think when I come back, I'm going to try, um, I'm going to try to find a nice, simple, affordable mixer. Right. Um, because I have the mics that I bought for, for going to TwitchCon and for anywhere going mobile. Cause those, those are relatively can like knock out a good amount of or not pick up so much background noise. Yeah. Like, so maybe um, I will give that a try. Like the uh, ATL 2100 is a cardioid dynamic mic. So in terms of me having um, a lot of music, let's say I had this, the, the TV on or something like that, and it was at a decent level, it wouldn't feed back that much into the microphone. Uh, so uh, ambient noise at a conference, same thing. You know, as long as I'm right there in front of the individual, uh, perfect sound. Um, ambient noise is just, you know, an extra touch to the, you know, the sound design of the experience, really. But it doesn't take away from, um, you know, the, the audio quality that you're going to get at the end. So if you were to do... Um, condenser, I think that one is more sensitive. You, the sound quality is great because it sounds like it's passing through like what they call a high pass filter where it has a lot of treble, um, to the, to the sound itself. So that's cool if your room is treated for that mic, right? So if it's an mm-hmm. omnidirectional mic that is, that happens to be uh, a condenser mic, and I think I'm saying correctly, um, that will pick up whatever noise is in the room. But if the, the room is treated for sound, then you're not going to have any issues. Um, so, so yeah, it, it depends on, on what you're trying to do and what you're trying to accomplish also. Just to reduce that so much, because like streaming, I do have co-streams with my boyfriend and his setup is right next to me. And it's that whole pickup of the both of us talking and having that kind of background noise. Right. Finding that balance has been difficult. And obviously I want that to carry on in over into the, the whole podcasting side of it too. And just reducing that. Right. Cause if you like, it's almost like almost a regular thing that oh, I think every other show of ours, especially when it's on Sundays, I always have somebody mowing the lawn. And yeah. that picks up so much. I want to be able to reduce that. So it's like, just like barely a hum. I don't think I can eliminate it 100% because there's no way for me to fully treat so and which, soundproof my Which room. mic are you using right now though? This is the Yeti. Okay. So Yeti what? Just the blue Yeti. I think it's not the mini one. It's just the blue All right. Yeti. So the blue Yeti micro, I want to see what it says. So based on what I was just saying about the dynamic and the, um, let me see what the Blue Yeti is considered. Uh, let me go on Amazon real quick. Maybe Amazon may not be where I should be going, but let me just check it real quick. Um, it says Tri Capsule Array 3 Condenser 
uh, capsules can record almost any simulation at range 12 years or above. Okay, so, so it is a condenser mic. So let me go on their website, see what it says. So yours will probably pick up, as you're saying, pretty much anything, right? Mm-hmm. A multi, yeah. multi pattern USB mic for recording and streaming. Um, let me see, buy not find, find dealer, uh, videos, features and specs. Let me see features and specs. Uh, for features, gain control, mute button, zero latency headphone, unique positional design, perfect for vocals, technical. Uh, microphone, uh, sample rate capsules, condenser capsules, uh, bi-directional, omnidirectional stereo. Yeah, so, so your mic essentially, uh, can pick up, you know, birds tapping on your window, anything. Yeah. <laughs> anything. But at the same time, if you set it up, uh, just right, uh, for, you could probably set up where it, just picks up you speaking in front of it. If it has like that setting, if you can kind of cut out the other sections that it's picking up from, right? So rather than having it do an omnidirectional pickup from wherever you have your, your vocals coming from to the actual mic, then you can just say, okay, so as long as I know I'm right here, because this is the only section that is on, on it, then it's just going to pick up me being right directly right in front of it. Or something like well, that. Well, see, that's the thing is, I do have it set to cardioid, I think. Okay. See. Dope. I do have it set up that way. Okay. I do. It still picks up everything. Adjusting the, like, the sensitivity, like, they have the turn knob on the back of it, adjusting right. that to, like, a very bare minimum. Um, even the built in on the PC itself, I've right. been changing that. I have, like, get the gate and the compression set up on. Uh, voice meter banana, but even then, it's just it still picks voice up. Voice meter banana. So, yeah, it's an audio mixer. <laughs> okay. That's an interesting. It thing. is. It is a. It's a donutware audio mixer. Okay. So, and it and it works pretty well, but I know that if I had the right mic, just that that to cut it out, it it just added out. And so improve it so much better. In, so I'm like looking in, into it into like different ones. And if I, if a dynamic mic is better for me, cause that's what I'm getting. But then I don't know. There's just so much information on the internet. I have to break through which one is the so best. So if, okay. So if it was me, right, doing it now and I did not have the ATR 2100, I would most likely do the Samsung Q2U, which is the one that they had in the video. Uh, essentially, that is uh, an XLR mic, a USB mic, like like they were saying, it's a Swiss Army knife of a microphone that can be used in any setting, right? And I think it's the fraction of the price of the ATR 2100, um, and it does the same thing. Um, so it has the, the stereo uh, 3.5 millimeter jack uh, thing on there. It also has the XLR port and the USB port. Um, and that I believe it's a dynamic microphone as well. So that there's an option, but I think that there's so many different mics, but like, I, I wish that I knew about that mic or the ATR 2100 when I first started, I wouldn't have gone through like six to eight mics already, uh, mm -hmm. from different companies. And I think that's what happens. And, and you, you start collecting them because you like how they sound or, or this one sounds over that one or whatever the case might be. But, um, but yeah, if you're trying to lean out uh, and just use things that can be switched between a mixer board or your PC, um, and I've used uh, this mic on the PlayStation as well, and it works really, really great because you could just throw a headset on the mic itself, plug the USB into the PlayStation, and it sounds really, really dope. So, um, so you got options like that too. There's a lot of options. Just trying Lord. to find that right one that fits the budget. Even even finding information about different actual physical mixers. Right, right. That that is a whole other territory to navigate through as well. Yeah. Now the mixer is interesting because you're. It, it all depends on how 
you're going to use it? Are you going to have do a lot of local stuff with two people or more? Or you you want the mixer to do uh, fade ins, you know, according to your stream, that kind of a thing. So it really depends on on what you're designing for it, I guess I'd I'd say. Uh, one of the reasons that I never really went with the mixer right away, and even now, I just rather go with the audio interface because that gives me a different sound from the mic than if I plug it in directly to the PC, which right right now I have it USB plugged in. But outside of that, um, I always use the option for the audio interface versus the mixer because it's just me here. And if I need to do something that is going to involve uh, someone else, I usually do that either on the road, that kind of a thing. So I'll just use the uh, the ceremonic um, option uh, that we we have now uh, for that. Yeah, for me, as far as the streaming side of it goes, more and more streamers are going with that. And they're not even necessarily like they'll use their Astros, but they won't use the mic portion. They actually double their their mic for not only being for in-game chat, but also for their chat for just streaming in general. And they use the mixer so they can toggle which one are they muting their mic from. Are they muting it um, from the stream? Are they muting it from um, from the game chat? Right. And they can just go in between them or are they just, you know, muting themselves completely from, from both of them. And to have it have it set up that way, it's like it's just so much easier. And then to be able to have the different sound effects and the equalizers and being able to adjust that is just that it's so much information and so much research to go into. It's like you don't want to buy something like, oh, okay, I'm going to buy this mixer because it's the best in the line, but it's $400 and it has 20 inputs when you probably only need four to accomplish what you're doing as far as a streamer goes. Right. And and then, I don't, I don't know, it's just a whole bunch, a whole bunch of information to take in. Yeah, it's a couple of things. It's a couple of things. So, uh, speaking of all that, I mean, happy International Podcast Day, Daniela. Yes, that's uh, that's kind of what it brought us into. It's happy International Podcast Day. Word. Because even if you're not even getting into streaming, audio, audio is just like the number one thing when it comes down to, to podcasting, to creating good content. Because video, video, you can just record any video. I personally think that as long as it's nice, crisp, and clear, as long as it's at minimum 720p, the video is always going to look good. Right. And you can always add some flair. But if it has bad audio in it, it's automatically just terrible. Yeah. Yeah, I noticed that. Uh, especially with uh, now, most of the time when I'm listening to the YouTube video or whatever the case might be, I just have it in the background. Um, for most of the shows that I watch, technically listen to now at two speed on YouTube. Um, and there is an actual extension for that, which is pretty neat. So I just ramp it up to two X and just run through some of the interviews that don't necessarily make their way to the podcasting form. Um, either in iTunes or Spotify, wherever they decide to put them. Uh, so I've been doing a lot of that and, um, it's been fun. You talk about audio and me being so super professional over here. I forgot to mute some things. Words. I forgot to, yeah, I forgot to mute. Like I, like I said, I have family visiting, so they don't text me for whatever reason. My family doesn't text me. They send me Facebook messages and they know I don't like using Facebook messenger. So here I am getting like four messages, like, Hey, and they're just sending me pictures. I'm like, why can't you text me these things? What is? <sighs> they want to use Facebook. I know they do. I don't know. It's like it's so much easier. No, you know what's easier? Pulling your phone out and texting me. <laughs> the um. So earlier today, um, I don't know. I guess I started telling you this, dude. My my PC was acting weird. It was really bad. Like the Bluetooth was cutting in and out. By itself, turning on and off by itself. The the Wi-Fi was cutting on and off by itself. So I'm praying that it doesn't do that while I'm recording with you right now, episode 471, because that would be that would not be cool. Okay, so I I changed passwords. I redid the Wi-Fi passwords uh, tonight, and um, it's great right now. So I'm excited about that. Um, 
Yeah. So so it was just a weird weird thing. Uh, you said you had some issues too, right? Well, what was going on with you? Um, mine was it was like almost this non-sub thing that my PC had an update, and it would like every day, different times of the day, I'm like oh, installing update. What update? Why can't, what, what Windows update can I constantly be having every day for the last five days? Right. And then it'll just restart on its own when I notice. And I know that the, the Windows 10, um, the next major Microsoft update is coming in October, which is tomorrow. But I'm like, even then, those updates don't even, it's not one after the other. And I don't see anything in my log file. So I kind of did a whole clean. Everything looks great on my computer. And then, um, the other night, Middle of the night, my PC just turns on. Nice. <laughs> it turns on. Does it log in I, too? No. no, it didn't log in. It just turns on. And I'm like, I don't have Team Viewer on. I have that set up a very specific way. Like, what is it doing? I went to go log in. It's not like there's nothing like running in the background that I should be questionable. Creepy. Did a whole scan. I, you know, I disconnected it from the network, turned it off. <laughs> right. And when I turned it off, before I even turned off, applying update. What update? <laughs> but you get patches every Tuesday, right? Or something like that? Typically? I think I have mine set up for every Wednesday. Okay. Sweet. Because it's like the day that I don't really stream. I don't really do anything too much on my computer. But, <sighs> That was it. And then ever since then, once well, like it's all done, hasn't done that since, but it's just little weird things like that. And then my audio, my audio has been a little bit weird too. Um, for certain, for certain game applications, like my audio will output to something completely bizarre. And it's some, it's an output that is actually disabled. Mm. But. Um, I think it was Graveyard Keeper that I started playing and I was like, why does this game not have any audio? I'm like messing around with it. I went to go check. I'm like, it's going out of a disabled, I guess, choice. I don't know what, what it's really called. I'm like, point to this one. Why are you doing this? <laughs> yeah. So the output is disabled, but it's trying to use that output. Yes. Weird. And the output is, um, what what was it? I can't remember. Oh, it's for um this mic. It's for this mic. I don't have audio coming out of this mic whatsoever. I don't have it set up to come out of the mic. So I'm like, I don't know why we would choose there, but okay. Word. Interesting. Interesting stuff. So episode four hundred and seventy one, a couple of things that we definitely want to cover. Uh the cross play stuff with PlayStation. That's been an interesting thing as well as uh, the Soul Calibur 6 network test that they had uh, this uh, weekend, which ended at, uh, I believe, 10 uh, p.m. Eastern Standard Time, right? I think it was 7 or, well, it was 8, I think it was 8 Pacific Standard Time, so it would be 11, right? 11 um, mm-hmm. Eastern Standard Time, so it's still going on right now, technically. So you got about a half an hour if you haven't, if you're listening to this live. Uh, definitely consider checking out the uh, Soul Calibur network test, which I'll talk more about and give my impressions on that later. Uh, also on the show, uh, Kanye changes his name. Uh, Deadpool PG-13 stuff, uh, Last of Us theme, X-Men Dark Phoenix trailer, uh, and some other news. Um, I believe it's a very light show this time around. I know Danielle doesn't want to say it, but I believe it is. Episode 471, thank you for listening. Uh, Daniela, uh, I was on a show called The Real Brian Show. I've been on that show before. That was their episode 131. And I like going on different shows because it gives me the opportunity to think out loud uh, and not think about the production side, editing side, uh, publishing side of content creation. When I'm here, it just allows me the opportunity to think about what I'm thinking about at the time and put that on wax. So, yeah, that was a good one. Um, I had a good time. So, Brian, thanks so much for the invitation there. Um, yeah, yeah, that, that's that's really all I have there. Um, I don't know if you had, had a chance to check that out because I know uh, you've been doing a lot of things. Uh, but uh, it's always Not a pleasure. Yet. Always, It's always a pleasure uh, doing those. And uh, whether you're starting out or 
I, I'm not going to throw Daniela out there, but if you're just starting a podcast and, and you like uh, some conversation, uh, whether it's episode one or episode 21, whatever you got going on, um, I'm willing to come on uh, if you got slots and I'll come chat with you. Uh, Andrew at theshowradio.info. Daniela, I don't know if you want to throw yourself out there, but I'm not doing it. Um, so I'll let you touch on that <laughs> if you need to. Yeah, I'm always willing. I'm always willing to be on other shows and get to meet new people. That's always fun and exciting. I might have a, I might be a little bit harder to get a hold of, but I will try my best to always make it happen some way, somehow. So you can definitely email me as well. Daniela, D-A-N-I-E-L-L-A at the show radio dot info. Or even if you just want to say hi, I'm down for conversations via text as well. Word. Words. That's what's yeah, going email on or text messages, not Facebook Messenger. Just to <laughs> clarify that, okay? <laughs> just to be clear on that. <laughs> so that's what's going on with that. So the Real Brian Show. Thanks so much. Episode 131. That's what's going on there. Podcasting is growing according to Spotify. There's going to be a link in the show notes for that under the technology. Connect, communicate, and create, which is a video that I saw earlier this week uh, touching on uh, a guide a starting guide, a quick starting guide to some degree uh, as far as podcasting is concerned. I think the video is about uh, two hours, I think, um, mm-hmm. uh, about a half an hour of Q&A at the end. It uh, features some some dope podcasters and content creators in that particular video. Watch the whole thing, uh, which is really good. I know Danielle is working through that right now in terms of um, uh, checking it out. What stuck out for you? I'm going to link that video in the show notes Um Absolutely. So what stuck out for you when you were checking that out uh, as far as the food for thought and takeaways? Um, well, what really started the conversation was when they were talking about mics Word. and that um, I believe it was the second. Yeah, he was the second uh, speaker. I can't remember his name, um, but he hosts Podcast Junkies. And I really liked his approach. I really liked the advice that he gave um, about just having a show about meeting other podcasters and talking to them and getting to know them as well as, you know, he like, it doesn't just end when the interview ends. It's a relationship that you build. And I feel that's like completely true with us too. I mean, even after we have people on the show, we continue conversations with them. We reach out to them. We, you know, find out the journey that they, they continue to be on. And, um, you know, even having them as a guest, there's really, really nice, I guess, etiquette, about having it and making it easier for them to, you know, get the, the most reach out of, out of your show with them and by doing the legwork for them. So they pretty much all they have to really do is copy pasta. Um, and, and I think that was definitely the most useful. The other two presenters there, they were really, really great too, but it, it was his that stuck out the most. And I, I felt had, um, you said copy really pasta. good advice. Yeah. Okay. I did. Okay. It is. It's a Twitch thing. I'm sorry. Yeah, I was <laughs> copy just saying. Uh, copy pasta. Uh, I, I just, uh, okay. I just said uh, to make sure. That There's an actual emote. There's a global emote in there. That's like, it's a copy machine with pasta. Got it. Got it. Okay. Carry on. <laughs> I'm good. So copy paste. Oh my God. I'm like, so I, I'll, I'll talk about that right after this, but he had the most information. I thought that was definitely could be more be applied to me or for us as well that I loved. And it was just a good two hours. Um, a lot of good information in there. If you ever want to go and check out that, uh, that documentary. Word. Good stuff. So what's this copy pasta stuff? Okay. So it's, it's a Twitch thing. It's a Twitch emote thing to go and copy pasta, copy paste. And there's an emote in there. And I was just realized there's like a, a subreddit post about um this girl who's asking for advice because her boyfriend uses like Twitch memes and ch- like speaks about Twitch emotes okay. offline and in person of other people and actually says them out like that. Okay. <laughs> I know. I know. So that's so it's so cringy. It's a really bad habit. Mm, I, I was just curious. Uh, so yeah. So that's uh, definitely a cool, cool vid. Uh, educational stuff, connect, communicate, and create. I always like to stay refreshed uh, as it relates to the industry so I don't have uh, old content or stick to old ways. I know things are changing. Uh, podcasting is evolving. Uh, storytelling is a thing. Um, 
I hugged a um, a lady at the grocery store this week. Just did she need it? Well, I mean, so so what happened was, you know, I go into this uh, supermarket, local supermarket near me, called Stop and Shop. So I get there, and um, I saw this lady before. You know, she works with one of the registers and stuff like that. And um, and um, the day that day, I wasn't feeling all you know super like chippy and, and happy. Uh, so there's some different things going on in my mind. I was just trying to, um, make sense of. So, and she, she gave such like good mom vibes, like, you know, but it wasn't because, you know, I said something for that. It was just like, you know, she gave good mom vibes. Right. So then I'm like, all right. So fast forward a couple of days later, uh, I go to, to the store. I see her again. And, and I was, getting ready to leave the store and I was like, you know, I just I just gotta tell her as you know, that she gives good mom vibes. So I said, Hey, you know, um, you know, and the lady I went to was another lady and I said, What's her name? And, you know, she told me her name and I said, You know what, you you give good mom vibes. Like like you really do. And she was like, Oh, you know, thank you and stuff like that. And, you know, I gave her a hug and then I bounced, right? Later on that day, you know, I had to go to an open house for my daughter so we're going through the different classes and stuff like that. And um, I get to like the last two classes or whatever before, you know, we break out and leave the school. And guess who I see? The lady at the grocery store. The lady with the good vibes. Like, what are the odds of that? You know, that kind of a thing. So, so yeah, so that was cool. Uh, so, um, so I saw her, I said, what's up? I was like, what are the odds that we see each other? Uh, in this in this spot, it's just like wow, that's that's crazy. So that's what happened with that. Uh, so a little quick story there. I wanted to share with, that with you guys. Um, anything before we go into entertainment news? Because this show is relatively short. We're gonna hit it and quit it um, in the context of what we're talking about the podcast, so we can sign off. Uh, Danielle, any comments, any thoughts before we go? No, no, nothing there. Okay, so a couple of things that took place. Uh, let me see, Friday. I think Lil Wayne released the Carter 5 album, which, I mean, what, that's like a couple of years in the making. Uh, there was some legal matters holding uh, the album from being released, um, as well as um, I think he released a lot of mixtapes in between before the actual album release. Uh, so you have that. That took place. Uh, Kanye changed his name to Ye, uh, I guess, in anticipation to... Uh, a release of another album from him called Yandi or something like that. I think that's that's the word on the street. And then the the Kavanaugh stuff that you don't want to talk about at all. Uh, any comments on those things? I don't. I don't understand these names. I swear. <laughs> what? Why? Why ye? I, I, like, hey. Who do you think he is? Yeah, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Okay, share the there. single syllables over here. Nobody can be share. You can't be share. You can't just can't just get by with just yeah. <laughs> That's I don't that. even know. I am ye. Yeah. I mean, even even Prince is a little bit crazy, and you know, Prince I felt like could get away with a lot. He was a great artist, but his was the simple whatever formerly known as Prince is the crazy, hue, the being, anyway. the being. <laughs> Are you two gonna change your name? Yeah, What's up, Try? I'm not changing my name, man. Nope. nope. Nah. I'm, I already my name is as short as I'm gonna allow it to be. I already changed it. it. It's either Uriah or my actual government name. And people actually call me Uriah like it's my real name. Which technically that's what I wanted to some degree because it reminds me of things that values that I want to hold, but at the same time, no, nah, I'm not changing my name to Uriah. Nope. Nope. My name is is what it is. I'm not just gonna be. I don't. I don't know. What, it could be any shorter. Yeah, I'm. I'm good. Word. Uh. So. So Kavanaugh Ford, uh, Senate committee. Daniela. Nope. Not happening. I know you don't want to talk. I don't. About that. I don't touch. I don't. You touch don't want to talk about politics. That. Nope. Uh. So that's been interesting. So uh, essentially, from what I gathered this week, um, Kavanaugh is up for a job. Right. And um, the conversation between him and the Senate committee felt like a trial, but it's a job interview. And there's just certain ways that you carry yourself as it relates to a job interview. 
I'm not going to believe that I belong at the job that I'm, I'm applying for, I'm interviewing for, even though I'm fully qualified for it. But if, if there's some allegations uh, in relation to that particular position and the company decides that it's, it's best that they investigate it, I, I think that's a good thing, right? Um, I, I'd mm-hmm. much rather get my name cleared than get pushed in a position where there's this looming cloud over, over me that maybe I did the things that I'm being accused for, right? Uh, so, so that's, that's the, the thoughts that I was having this week. Like, um, Kavanaugh didn't sound like he wanted an additional FBI investigation to take place. Okay. So yeah, this is technically under the entertainment category because it was, it was like house of, it was like watching house of cards. Okay. This week felt like a bonus season or episode of House of Cards before House of Cards actually comes out November 2nd. I think that's when the final season is going to show up with Claire. Okay. So, um, so that's why I sit under the entertainment news. Why am I talking about it? That's what I'm talking about because I thought it was very amusing to some degree where some things were logically, um, you know, just made sense to me as it relates to if I have any, um, hint of something that may be not quite there with a particular candidate, I would investigate uh, to the best of my ability. Um, and, um, but it didn't sound like he wanted that to happen. Um, and there was an elevator scene that was really interesting. The elevator scene was between one of the individuals that has a swing vote uh, that can really matter into the whole thing, right? And uh, this guy's name is Jeff. Flake and Jeff Flake got uh, protested um, by a whole bunch of uh, ladies um, near an elevator. He was in the elevator and they just, you know, shared their situations and stories with him. And that made it very interesting where uh, he gave it some additional thought that night because the next day at five, uh, the Friday at one thirty was supposed to be the vote. The vote didn't happen because... He wanted to uh, really think about as far as the situation with the FBI, let that happen. You know, the conscience thing kind of hit him. And um, here we are with the FBI investigation on the way as we speak. And that's supposed to be a week long. And it sounded like uh, the limiting scope of the FBI investigation was going to be, uh, you know, handed or crafted by the uh, White House. Uh, but Trump said that he's not limiting the scope of of the FBI investigation. And it sounded like Kavanaugh, the wordsmith, the judge, the lawyer, was equating the uh, Senate committee conversation or quote-unquote interrogation, if you want to call it that, to an FBI investigation, an FBI investigation is one of the most detailed things that you can ever go through uh, by way of an investigation. They're sworn to do that. That's their job. They're, you know, that's what they um, committed to do, you know, in terms of that particular position, which is why I could see he was against it. Uh, Is he hiding something? I don't know. Is he guilty? I don't know. Um, will he become the next Supreme Court uh, individual in that particular slot? Uh, time will tell. But it's been an interesting week. And that's the report from that, Daniela. It's been interesting. So I'm just I'm watching it play it. out. <laughs> I know you're not touching it. I'm just watching it play out. So um, really, really reading some stuff from the New York Times, checking that out. And um, I just found it interesting. I think that for me, as it relates to watching this thing play out, it could be anything really, whether I'm listening to something from BBC or watching uh, stuff from New York Times or even the Washington Post, as I'm watching it play out, uh, I'm really just looking for the logic in it. And um, sometimes the logic is there and sometimes it isn't, uh, depending on the agenda that's trying to be met on this side or that side, whatever the case might be. But in the end, um, right now the investigation is going on and 
Uh, we'll see what happens after that. So that's what's going on there. Uh, Deadpool, PG-13, uh, Deadpool 2, that's going to be uh, Winter. Really? I think so. I think they're... Yeah, it is almost over. Huh? It really is almost one. <laughs> just like I'm just like it's dawning on me oh, yeah. these time frames here because tomorrow, tomorrow is October. Man, yeah, man. I mean, I guess if you can make it possibly PG thirteen, I wonder how much they have to cut out to make Deadpool PG thirteen yeah. friendly. Yeah, so that's what's happening guess. there. Um, I, you know what? I thought I saw it, but I didn't. Uh, but I definitely hear. Your thoughts on if you think I explain the Kavanaugh stuff based on how I saw it. What did you think of the explanation? If you listen to the show, definitely uh, use the hashtag TSRPod. Want to hear your thoughts on that? That's definitely interesting. And, and what mic do you use? Uh, do you use a condenser? Do you use a dynamic? I definitely want to hear your thoughts on social. Uh, keep us in the loop uh, of that stuff. So Deadpool 2, I didn't see yet. Definitely need to see that. Also released uh, this week. Uh, sometime this week on most of the music platform, distribution platforms, Last of Us Part 2, main theme. Uh, I did listen to it. Um, I'll reserve my thoughts. I want to hear yours first. I didn't get to listen to it yet. I didn't. Okay. I didn't get to do a lot of things. I'm, like, behind. Okay. It's, it's, it's good. Um, but? I, I was expecting something different, but I guess I should have. I should have uh, mapped, and, and I think that because I didn't play the first one, so it, I didn't have any um, foundation to go into to listen to the actual track. Like, if it was something else, maybe I would be a little bit more prepared. But when I listened to it, I was like, well, it's cool. It, it wasn't, you know, I, even even with the stuff we're, we're, we're going to talk about later on as it relates to uh, Soul Calibur 6, the network test and stuff like that, um, reserving my thoughts for that, uh, there's just some some tra- soundtracks that just move me right away, and then there's some that's like, all right, it's interesting, you know, it, it's not bad. It's just I guess it's just not my, you know, my taste, you know, as it relates to the soundtrack. So um, that's that's not a good or a bad thing. It's just that I realize that I'm more picky than I realized, and and that's what's going on with that. Uh, X Men Dark Phoenix trailer. That was, um, did you see that? That was dope. Okay, fair enough. I did. want to hear your thoughts on that. That was dope. I liked it. I liked it a lot. Um, can't remember the actress's last name. Sophie, though. Sophie Sansa Stark from Game of Thrones there. I think she makes an amazing Jean Grey. I think she's going to be a great Dark Phoenix. And I like her vis- versatility as an actress. I really do. She has to be... One of my newest favorite actors that's like coming up and to see her progress as, as an actress in Game of Thrones because she can't, I don't remember how old she was when she started the series, but she was really young and she's grown into this woman and like her, her ability is pretty wide because, you know, she plays that in- innocent, kind, gentle girl. And then you have her coming into the dark phoenix here, which I, I think she was just born to play that role right now. And I know that's to say that really, really early on, but I love that trailer. I loved, I, it gave me chills and I'm excited to see it because that was like one of my favorite storylines when it came to X-Men period was Dark Phoenix. And I kind of like the, the reboot and what they did to correct the X-Men storyline. Because early on it was really bad. I forget the Fam Famke. I can't re- pronounce her name correctly. The actress who played Jean Grey, um, the first time, uh, Famke Gems Jenison. Mm. I can't. I can't. I don't know how to pronounce her name. She kind of had a look, but I didn't really like it. I didn't like what what they did with the character, what the storyline was, and then they had. You know, they kind of wiped the storyline and corrected it with the whole time travel thing and fixed it. And then you have uh, Sophie here playing it and took her part. I can't wait to watch it. Yeah, Femke Jensen. Yeah. Yeah. That, that's how you correctly pronounce her name. <laughs> that's what it looks like. But Sophie Turner. Sophie Turner. That's her name. Yeah, Sophie Turner. I think it's I think it's awesome. Word. Yeah, it was really, really dope. I was really moved by it. Uh, definitely, um, 
amazing uh, cinematography, all that good stuff as it relates to X-Men. And I think maybe a day later, they moved the original date from what it was yeah, I think to it's, uh, June now or something 2019. like that. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, so they moved that. Uh, but it's definitely looking really good. So if you're interested in the X-Men uh, stuff, which is always dope, I believe, um, definitely consider checking that out. And, um, yeah, so that's, that's pretty much what's going on there. I definitely want to share some information with you as it relates to uh, ProXPN. ProXPN is a free, easy-to-use VPN service that secures your internet connection against eavesdropping, mask your location, and allows you to access your favorite sites no matter where you live or travel to. Uh, to get 20% off of your account, visit bshowradio.info forward slash ProXPN and use the promo code S-H-O-R-A-M for 20% off the lifetime of your account. This episode is also brought to you by Blue Apron. Blue Apron makes cooking fun and easy. Uh, Blue Apron provides you with all the ingredients that you need uh, to make a delicious meal in exactly the right proportions. To get $30 off your first Blue Apron order, visit bshowradio.info for slash Blue Apron. Uh, that's what's going on with that. Uh, video game news. Uh, video game news this week has, has been interesting. I mean, there's um, it, it seemed light, but that could be me. Uh, and, um, so I definitely want to hear your initial thoughts on, um, anything that you saw this week that we didn't add. You know, I, I think I added most of the stuff that, that was, uh, relevant or I should say on brand to stuff that we usually talk about outside of the stuff with, uh, Kavanaugh, the Senate committee and, and Dr. Ford. But aside from that, uh, video game news that uh, we were there. What's going on with you? Um, actually, I didn't even get a chance to add this on because I just saw it before we, maybe 15 minutes before we went live okay. today. Um, there's actually a new game that was in a Kickstarter that I didn't hear about until, you know, 15 minutes before I started the show called The Last Year. Okay. And it, it kind of looks like a, a Dead by Daylight thing. The difference being is that you're, uh, you play a killer and you're hunting down high school students in a high school. It's basically what it is. It looks like all first person. Um, not that that qualifies as like huge gaming news, but what really, really, really caught my attention, I thought was interesting. It's not being distributed on Steam or any of the consoles. It's being distributed and it's going to start off. I think in the future it will be on Steam later. It's okay. going to start off on Discord. Really? It's only going to be available on the Discord store. And I'm like, that feature isn't even live yet, and I think it's supposed to go on sale next month. I think um, I'm not hundred. I'm not sure because again, I'm just like I'm just finding out information. And I thought that was actually really kind of cool. So I know that Discord um, is like trying to get into it and, and be that new platform and to compete with Steam. And Steam has been trying to up their whole chat features as well too. Right. So they've been integrating that earlier this year. Um, but I'm just, I'm just kind of curious. I was like, the less the first game that I've heard that's going to be, you know, utilizing this. I'm like, that's, that's kind of awesome, really. Yeah. So the last, last year, uh, five versus one multiplayer survival horror. Is that what you're talking about? Yes. That okay. one. All right. Cool. So I'll add that in the show notes, uh, last year. So we can throw it. Actually, the first one, actually, last year, survival, survival. Last year, the nightmare. That's what it's called. So, yeah, I'm so like, I I... that. Our Kickstarter is going to be in the show notes as well. Uh, very interesting stuff. Uh, experience the nightmare together, together, uh, as you <laughs> and five friends struggle to survive against one player that's playing as the killer. Uh, created by James Matthew Weering. Uh, this is going on with that. Uh, this is going to be in the show notes. Definitely check that out. Uh, next thing that we have, let's just close that. No. Next thing that we have, uh, Red Dead Redemption 2, uh, has 105 gig install. And the PS4 gets extra content 30 days early. Any thoughts on that? That's insane. Like, yes. I think I've only just started accepting and acknowledging that games are going to be, like, between the 40 to 60 gig range. Yep. But 105. I mean, I understand it's going to be 4K. It's going to be great. I'm sure it's going to do a lot of stuff. Might as well just, like, 
start looking to upgrading your hard drives now. Like that one terabyte that's coming in the pros, nah, just, just might as well just jump to the four terabytes, upgrade that hard drive. Those are affordable now. Yeah. You can do it. PlayStation has, you know, even instructions about what you want to, what you can do. And like pretty much the too long don't read is download the latest update from PlayStation, put it on top of your, um, a thumb drive. Save whatever games you have to the cloud, install your new hard drive, plug in the USB, and it kind of just does the work for you. It's really that simple to yeah. go and do. Did I tell you my little gripe uh, with them the other time on Twitter? No, what's up? We didn't have this. I thought we had this conversation. So I'm sitting here on Twitter, and I'm trying to find out what's the max that I can put oh, internally. Okay. Did we do that? Did we yes. talk about that? Yes. Yeah, yeah did, about that. you had a whole other one this week. <laughs> did I had another one this week? I thought no, I thought you had another. No, no, like they, no, they, they would not. That. I mean, yeah, just uh, I guess in short, they would not tell me that they supported eight terabyte internally, and then eight externally, which would make it sixteen. All I wanted to know was what do you and what is the max that you guys recommend internally? They would not tell me that, but it is eight. Uh, terabytes internally that you can actually do uh, for the PlayStation 4 and then 8 externally which will give you 16. Um, so that's what's going on with that. Don't want to be too long on it there. Uh, Fallout 76 beta is arriving first on Xbox One and the start date for this is October 23rd. October 23rd. PlayStation 4 and PC players will access the game on October 30th. Any thoughts on that? Mm, again, they still haven't really changed how they're going to be working this beta because, like like I mentioned, which is my personal gripe with it, is that just because you pre-ordered a game does not guarantee you access to the beta program. Even that is going to be a picky thing, which I think is absolutely ridiculous. Right. It is. I mean, I don't personally like games that force you to pre-order something to get beta access. Really don't. Um but the, it just kind of looks this normal thing in there. And people, I'm sure, I'm sure they want to pre-order it for the really, co- really cool stuff. But if you just got the standard edition thinking that, oh, okay, if I get this, I'll get access to beta. No, no, it's lottery there. All right. So I can wait. So for <laughs> Fallout 76, you do need to pre-order to get the, the code for it? Is that how they're doing um, it? I didn't check. Yeah. So. Something like that. You don't get a, you won't instantly get a beta code, but it is going to be like from that pool of people who did. Not all, not everybody will have it. And you know what drives me insane? Because I know this is going to happen because it happens with every game out there. Is that they always say pre-order to get this, and then next thing you know, the day comes, and then you'll see all over Twitter, all over people's Twitches things. Oh, here's a free code for this beta, and no pre-order needed. Mm. It always happens. It drives me insane how that works out. Word. Uh, Fallout 76, um, I, I don't know. It, it's not on my radar right now. Uh, so much Destiny, man. Like, it's ridiculous. I was playing Destiny just before we logged in. Like, you called me and I looked at the call and I looked at Destiny and I looked at the call and I was like, wait, I need to pick up this call. <laughs> it's pretty bad. <laughs> it's pretty bad. Uh, so that's what's going on with that. Uh, Castlevania Symphony of the Night. And Rondo of Blood Haunt, uh, PlayStation 4, October 26. Uh, that's what's going on with that. Uh, thoughts on that? It's been a while since I played a Castlevania, but I feel like they didn't they just come out with another Castlevania earlier this year? Or am I crazy? Um, I feel like I'm probably. A little I don't crazy. think you're crazy. I know that the Netflix thing was a thing because you watched that. Um, any content in between for Castlevania, I haven't really uh, paid attention to. Uh, so that's what's going on with that. The only thing that I need to find out for myself as it relates to uh, Symphony of the Night is how great the soundtrack is. Because I'm always hearing this game is amazing, soundtrack is dope, all that good stuff as it relates to that. So I definitely need to check that out for myself. Yes, I have 100%. Word. I think you should. That's what's going on with that. Crack the whip. No. <laughs> no what? <laughs> it's a terrible name of the card. Whoever thought that was okay. A terrible whoever name. Whoever thought that was okay. It really was. 
terrible name. So if you haven't been paying attention, uh, I can't even say it. Big, whoa, hold on, hold on. I'm just trying to regroup here. If you haven't been paying attention to this news bit, uh, Crack the Web card used to boost a Black Hero class will now be called Coordinated Assault. And this is a, a Valve thing. Um, I don't even, I, I, I didn't, why am I, why am I hot right now talking about this? I, um. Cause it's, it's in bad taste. So basically yeah. it's an artifact in Dota 2's like card collecting portion of their game. Right. And basically what the card does is modify a black hero with after you play a black card, give this hero and its allied neighbors plus two attack this right. round. And then, of course, comes the bad, the bad joke of, why well, I gotta be black though? <laughs> listen. But, listen. But the fact that it says crack the whip and pretty much the animation on there is like this creature. He's literally cracking the whip over his, you know, his team. Bad taste. Yeah. Just, it was really, I don't know. I don't know how it went through the entire development team, the art team, the QA team, marketing team, and Advertising nobody thought, team. Yeah. It, it just like nobody thought like community hmm, managers. Uh, maybe, maybe we should name this something else. No maybe. Idea. No, nobody did. They waited until like the internet got the hand on it and we we're like, really? Really, dude? By the way, <laughs> we don't think uh, breast physiques uh, need to be in this thing, so we'll remove it right away. Did you see that? Oh, yeah. You mean the one for Fortnite? Yeah. When they said so they accidentally did that for one of their new characters in there because someone right. had some jiggle effects there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So that, that happened, too. Uh, so that's what's going on with that. Uh, next thing, uh, PlayStation Experience. Um, uh, it's, it's an awesome event. I got a chance to go one time and experience it, and it was really dope. Um, Daniela, I definitely want to hear your thoughts on PlayStation Experience, what you've seen and, and heard or experienced for that event, and your thoughts on it not being a thing this year. I like watching. I like watching the stuff that it, every platform has that's just dedicated to them. It's not clouded by you know the other competition at some cluttered event. So I like I like like the Nintendo Direct. And I love PlayStation Experience. It's just a very center thing. I'm very sad that it's not happening though. Mm. Um, I mean, it's a, it's kind of like a new, how long they've been going on? This is gonna, this would have been the fifth year? Yeah, this would have been five. Okay. You're right, you're right. So, um, I don't know. Is it just like a one, one off thing that they're not gonna be having it? I think it's be back it, next year. It sounded like content, like um, because I was listening to that podcast three o. I think it was the Woo podcast. I think that's what they call it. Z W O O O or something like that. Uh, so I was listening to that particular podcast, um, and uh, Sean Layden was on there talking about it, and basically uh, the content that they have out that's doing really well, and what they would have to put together to make that uh, an attractable event to come to uh, is just not there. Right. And rather than spend all that money for it, uh, I'm pretty sure that we'll see any many updates with uh, Sean Layden making uh, appearances more often on the podcast. That's what it sounds like that's going to happen, because the last time he was on the podcast, I think he was he gave a, a, a quick bit about the cross play and how they were looking at that. And I think that um, he's going to be coming on there a little bit more often to give updates because everyone is sharing information that way as it relates to podcasts, right? You need, you need a quick update that you want a, a whole bunch of individuals to, to listen to, to, to gauge or comment on and post on their blogs and outlets and stuff like that. The best way to do it is have it on a podcast. And, and, um, and I think that's what we started doing. Like most of our thoughts now on the podcast more than they're on, on Twitter's and, and man, has Twitter been, heavenly for me the last two weeks oh man we didn't even talk about that yeah and i and i think a lot of it goes into them canceling it because there's a lot of huge news that already came out over tokyo game show um e3 gamescom all, all of this stuff that i think they just let all their exclusive information 
out there. So what else could they really possibly have that's new? I mean, a, a studio can only work so fast to create something that's going to be new that the, the, the world hasn't seen yet. And I think Tokyo Game Show went in really deep with the Death Stranding stuff, which is a PlayStation exclusive. Um, they did a lot of stuff there and announced um, Troy ba- Baker as uh, one of the the voice actors. They show some new stuff um, there. Only oh, can do so much for Ghost Ghost of Tsushima. Um, I don't even think they can have anything that's left over to talk about. Even the Sekiro um, Shadow Side twice. I don't know what else they could possibly say that could justify a whole show dedicated to it. It does right. suck. I mean, I would have loved to see it, but I think. And them distributing the content and information for their own exclusive games was probably something that had had to do that. Although there is speculation, I think, that people is like, oh, they're probably getting ready for like the PlayStation 5. So I don't know how much... I don't even know if I'm ready for a PlayStation 5 yet. I don't think I am. I'm I don't not. think I am. I'm still trying I'm still trying to get over the fact that they're not going to have the PlayStation Vita anymore. <laughs> Uh, yeah, they're really, they're really sad. taking that out. Um, but it's still, it's still a dope device though. So you have, so if they're playing for PlayStation 5, which, as you mentioned, seems still too early because the, the PlayStation Pro is doing well. Uh, I still have the standard, uh, PlayStation just upgrade the hard drive and stuff like that using an external for that, uh, running pretty well still. Um, most of my stuff is streaming for the most part. So yeah, so there's the, as you said, there's really no rush, uh, for it right now, but if they are planning for that, then the next big reveal, uh, or, or, or teaser of any sort will be next year, right? Which will fall along the lines between, uh, late 2019 and 2020, uh, we'll start seeing either, you know, specs or, or hardware, uh, conversations or, or, potential leaks from different organizations who happen to have different things. Um, and before I forget, um, Bungie has a trademark on a particular uh, software thing called Matter, uh, which which I ran across uh, briefly. I don't think I put that in the notes, but um, just as, it, as I was thinking about it, I didn't want to forget about it. Um, but yeah, so the uh, PlayStation experience is, is dope. Um, and, but I'm still looking forward to all the things that we're going to see from all the different companies pushing out, uh, Twitch updates, as you mentioned, the Nintendo Direct has always been good, uh, to update us, uh, and it saves the company a lot of money. That's another thing too. That event, was it two days or something like that? It's, it's not, I'm sure it's not cheap. But I think, well, they're not having anything. I'm, I'm fine with it. I think the only, the next, that it might be the last biggest thing as far as coming out of, um, each of the platforms is Xbox. Xbox has their thing. I think it's happening in November called the XO 18 or Xbox 118, something like that. That happens, um, yeah, that's early uh, no- November. Uh, XO some, like, 18. Yeah. And they also announced yeah. a mouse and keyboard for that too. Uh, mouse and keyboard so, support, I should say. But in between that one, that's going to be like possibly the last that we're going to hear as far any big reveals, I think. Cause I can't think of any events that's happening in between now and the end of the year. And the next time I can possibly think starting into next year, mm. it would be possibly Nintendo Direct because they have that twice a year. And I think that's early in the year. And then after that, I mean, we go right into E3 again. So yeah. So considering that is nine months out, which I did announce the dates for E3, um, that's nine months out right now. That's a lot of time to build up hype um, and information on stuff that we're all looking forward to and that we're just going to have to sit here in anticipation. Word. It's going to be the next biggest thing. So so before I... I, I think I'm just going to throw it in the show notes as well. A bunch of false trademark application for undisclosed project matter. Uh, what's the matter, Bungie? That's clever. Um, yeah, so that's going to be in show notes. Um, and, uh, yeah, it's, it's some kind of game of some sorts. Uh, it has the logo and everything. So I'll add that in the show notes as well. Uh, let me throw it since we're here. The PlayStation experience. Bungie matter. All right. Uh, PlayStation Plus uh, free games for October. 
Uh, so that is actually we have uh, a link for that in the show notes. So I just want to open it up real quick. Uh, that ended up being what specifically? Let me look um, so we have Friday the Thirteenth, the game Word. Laser League. I think that's their two headlining free games, which. Considering coming off from being able to get Destiny 2 yes. and God of War 3 yes. this month, like this for October, it's almost kind of a little bit of a letdown. Like, I mean, so Destiny how do you ends follow that today, up? right? How do you but follow that up? Destiny ends today, right? Yeah. So if you don't get that and you're able to, oh, you're passing up something, something mm-hmm. dope. Uh, but I agree with you. Uh, it's, it's really, to me, it's kind of lame, uh, because I'm not really interested in any of these titles here. Uh, the bridge, uh, rocket, well, rocket birds has always been interesting, but SPS Vita, crossplay, PlayStation 4, uh, 2064, read only memories. I don't know. Uh, I'm not familiar with that. Uh, master reboot for PlayStation 3, the bridge, PlayStation 3, and I haven't uh, plugged in the PS3 in a while. So, yeah. I have tried Destiny. Try. I did. And after a while, it just wasn't for me. Oh I get, I did. I gave it like a month. <laughs> what? Just now? Recently? No, not recently when it okay. came out. Okay. And it just wasn't for me. It wasn't, I don't know. It, I got bored. For me, personally, I got bored. And I know I'm killing, I'm like slowly killing. Oh man! Right here. <laughs> oh man! Uh, but yeah. I can still appreciate the game. It is a good game. It's just not my my cup of tea. Didn't it didn't it didn't, yeah. it didn't hold yeah. me. Charles was just asking, <laughs> "What did you try testing?" <laughs> That's funny. She tried it. Don't like it that much. Uh, so. The uh, Phil Spencer announces XO18, which we just mentioned. Uh, as far as Destiny U's is concerned, since we briefly talked about that a few seconds ago, uh, the Masterwork Cores is going to be, there's going to be some change there, better exotic drops. Exotic drops are really super rare right now. Most of the exotics that you can get that aren't technically rare, uh, based on the quest steps, the quest steps can be very, very lengthy, depending on how much you want to do that. But I did get Cade's hand cannon, which was a big deal for me. If, if there was any exotics, I really wanted that game because it was Cade's and he passed away. I wanted that as a memory. Uh, and that is one of the dopest hand cannons in the game. There's a couple. There's uh, Luna's Howl, which is a competitive one. And there's uh, Male Facence, which is the Gambit play mode. Um, if you want to try to do that quest step to get it, but that's a random drop to even start the quest and gambit for that one. But outside of that, uh, Destiny is rocking. Lots to do. And, um, they're keeping you busy and you have to plan out your sessions depending on what you're trying to do in the game. Uh, so that's what's going on there. Um, next thing, cross play. Cross platform play. Daniel, this big deal. Big deal. Huge so deal. So yeah, so 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 give me some of that. I think I think Fortnite is officially the first and only game that allows cross play on all of the platforms at a single time. It took it took it long enough and I know I think earlier this year PlayStation got so much shade from everybody for not having that enabled and they finally gave in. They had like a test for it. Um you can have you can play now with PC, Xbox, um, Switch, PlayStation, and mobile players all in the same game at the same time. Um, that's a huge thing. Even even just uh, I guess if you are a streamer and you just you know want to be able to play with your viewers, this makes it so much easier. You don't have to say, like, "Hey, I'm only playing with Xbox right now," or "Hey, I'm only playing with PlayStation right now." Now it doesn't matter. You can just use the in-game chat. That's like, that's the only downfall is I don't really like in-game chats. I don't like in-game chats for any game, not just Fortnite, any game. But it's okay. You can play with all your friends now. You don't have to pick and choose. You don't have to switch to your console to go, you know, go from your Xbox to your PlayStation and play with your PlayStation buddies. It's, it's on everything. And I think that's, it's, 
that's monumental. I think that's a great idea. I hope they keep it. I hope it sticks around. So can you imagine if we didn't have all these different outlets having these conversations about their uh, disappointment in PlayStation? How fast would that turnaround be? Like in, uh, back in the day when you had to read uh, the magazines to see the articles that are posted from whoever it was that, that got published uh, versus now you have all these different gaming podcasts talking about things that they don't like that a company is currently doing where they actually get that feedback to make changes. It would it would not be that fast turnaround, I don't think. What do you think? No, it wouldn't. But it's still, I mean, I think it wasn't that fast. Definitely faster if we didn't have the social media platforms that we do now. But it still took three months. Just over three months to happen because I think, I think Fortnite was announced for the Switch E3. That was in June. And then they also announced at the same time that there was cross play between the Switch and the Xbox. That was in June. Now we're in the ending of September and that three and a half months or so. That's still a long time for a company to like, you know, change their mind about it and let it go. Especially considering that I think it was ending of last year or early this year. PlayStation did accidentally enable it so that Xbox and PlayStation people could play together. They did it by accident, but it did happen. So the ability to do that earlier in the year was there. It wasn't something that they could not do. Nice. So it, it to me, even though I'm sure it's a whole lot more than a turn of a switch there, um, it quite literally was. It could have been. You, they could have done this. They could have done this first. And if they would have done that first, if they would have accepted that crossplay well before the Xbox, the Switch, and everything did, I think marketing-wise, that would have worked out in PlayStation's favor so much better than them waiting. Because that's huge. Yeah, it's definitely a big deal. I'm I'm excited for the individuals who play the game like that, uh, to get the opportunity to play with the individuals that they've always wanted to play with. Um, that would be great to see that happen for uh, Destiny. I think that would be, what, between Xbox and PlayStation. That would be really neat uh, because there's some individuals that uh, I still would love to play with uh, on the Xbox platform since I'm mostly uh, PlayStation right now, and that would be neat uh, to, to do. That would be really, really cool. Um, anything between now and uh, the last topic? Because we're about there. Mm, no, not right now that I can think of. Okay, so so Soul Calibur uh, 6 network test impressions. Um, I definitely really, really enjoyed uh, what I played for Soul Calibur. I've always been a Soul Calibur fan uh, from afar. I played the first, second, and third. I think I have one on the shelf now uh behind me it might be four or five i'm not sure but uh definitely collected even if i didn't play it as much uh but um the only challenge that i saw for the soul caliber six network test that just took place this weekend since we're going into the first of october was the fact that they only had one mode which was ranked mode. They had a whole bunch of characters, but you know, I just went to my favorite, which is Maxi, the guy with the nunchakus, as you call them, right, <laughs> Daniela? Um, so I went with my favorite character, played a uh, match there, was very successful in that particular match. Uh, it played very, very smooth. Everything was great in that regard. Soundtrack, uh, orchestral arrangement and composition was amazing as it relates to that demo that we got for their ranked mode. They should have had uh, a, a quick play mode, not just a ranked mode, because some individuals uh, may not even do a ranked mode because of that, right? Because it's ranked and they don't want to do that. They just want to play a chill mode, which is more quick play, not necessarily a highly competitive mode. So uh, that could be a turnoff for, for some. So if they consider doing that network test again, it would be in their best interest to... Either uh, rotate, well, they they may not necessarily rotate the characters because I think most of the characters were available to check out, but to add a quick play mode and the the load times were ridiculous. Okay, so that was the the only negative I could really say for 
that particular experience was the load time. It took me anywhere between two to five minutes just to get into a match. Oh, and, that's a really long time. And that's I not mean, cool. It really isn't, but in gamers, in gamer that's time, not cool. that's a long time. <laughs> that's not cool. The first time I tried it, I, I never really ended up getting into a match. I tried to specify the regions or a broad, make, make the region really, really broad. And I think even making the regions, all regions, um, all languages and stuff like that, that still took a couple of more minutes than anticipated just to join a match. So if you did have like a quick play mode, um, hopefully the thought is that, I don't know if that's a net code conversation or whatever, uh, in terms of matchmaking, that should be a little bit quicker. Um, and that's, that's my thoughts on that. Outside of that, characters are memorable. I believe if you love the Soul Calibur series, I still remember Soul Edge, the intro music, uh, for, for that game. And I know they remade some YouTube videos where they use the Soul Calibur, I think, for, uh, character, um, graphics to redo that intro because that music for that particular game is so iconic and even the voice over, um, person that does the Soul Calibur stuff and even the outro of uh, the games when you win a game or uh, you didn't win a game, just the voiceover that they have for that game has always been incredible. So um, outside of the loading times, um, they should have a quick play mode and not just a rank mode. They should consider doing the test again because if that's the test that they're going into uh, for the game, which comes out, I think, the week of the uh, 14th or 15th or something like that. I think it drops really soon, uh, mid-October or something like that. Um, I don't think that's good for them. I think they should do one more test. And then when they do that test, add a quick play mode that really is going to stress test this network, you know, the point of it, right? I think that should, that should be, if you have to have additional servers to make it work, then that's what you're going to have to do. But if you release it, based on what we just got for the rank matches, then the game is not going to sell as well as it could. Um, super fans are going to buy it regardless. I'll say that. But in terms of the initial reaction of a game and their network code not being great, um, that's not good. And I still remember Castle Crashes when it first came out. Uh, that game had um, a lot of network issues. It was one of the dopest for player co-op games, and even to date, I still believe it is, but I think it took 8 to 12 months before they actually, at least it felt that way, I'll say that, maybe it was less, but it felt like almost a year before they got the network code right in the game, where you can actually enjoy a drop-in, drop-out co-op experience with Castle Crashers. So overall, So Calibur 6 is going to be dope, but if that's the preview to the net code, then um, that's that's concerning. Wow. Okay. The, the netcode is a huge thing. If you're a fighter, if you play fighters and strictly that, or if you're competitive, that's like 100% the most important thing is the netcode. Um, cause I know like, uh, my boyfriend, he does that, he, or he used to compete in that regularly. Um, netcode for Street Fighter V, I know is like really, really, really bad. But then you have games like KI, which is really great, just doesn't have that big enough pool. And I don't even think it has to do so much with location. Ping is a huge thing too, but you know, if you want to be successful, that's just something you have to have, not just as a fighter, but just, just the game overall. If you want your game to be successful, that is something you just have to have down pat. Absolutely. And that's pretty much it. That's all I have for that. Uh, so Calibur 6 is going to be dope. Uh, and that's, that wraps us, uh, that wraps us up. That's it. Uh, so definitely, uh, thanks. I want to say thanks to DJ Cupman for the intro and outro music for uh, the show, this episode 471. Uh, and Daniela, close us out. I know. Okay, so maybe you were right. It was a little bit short. Hour and a half. I told you. A little bit short. Yeah, well, I don't ever want to jinx, okay? I, just, I don't. <laughs> I don't complain. I'm not bad. I'm not upset if it's short or long. It is. It's the length that it needs to be. Yes. That's, that's all. And that's where we are. All right. Well, thanks for tuning into our podcast. You can find the show radio on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. If you haven't yet, head over to Apple Podcasts or your favorite podcatchers and subscribe, rate, and review our show. For our show notes, donation options, visit theshowradio.info. 
And thanks for tuning in and see you guys in the next one. Bye.